Bonds in theory are a very simple subject, but I've never understood them. And the reason I wanted to have Adam on for bonds is simply because, you know, like that my friend Harry Dent, you know, he's always saying buy treasury bills. But I'm concerned, you know, if what I think is about to happen is going to happen, which is the demise of the U.S. dollar, the hegemony of it and its power and this reserve status, if the dollar, U.S. dollar goes bad and fiat currencies go bad, what happens to bonds? So that's why we have Adam Taggart and he's on his incredible program, Wealthion, I subscribe to, the company subscribes to it. And what Adam does on his program, he takes extremely complex subjects. How safe are subjects bonds because I'm a friend. Dumps it I mean, he has like not a million, he has hundreds of millions in bonds. And uh, yesterday I went and bought some more silver and hit them in my secret mountain vault. Uh, but he says, ah, he won't touch silver. He says, U.S. treasuries are it. So with that question, when he's got hundreds of millions stashed in U.S. treasuries, he sounded like Harry Dent. So mm -hmm. to clarify all this, we brought on Adam Taggart, and he and his uh, former partner, Chris Matt, uh, Martinson, uh, they talked about... Um, not the dollar milkshake theory, which was Brent Johnson, but they talked about the eyedropper of water and a football stadium. So I think that's a very good uh, metaphor, the eyedropper of water, eyedrop of water and an entire football stadium. Because I think that I, the last eyedrop is about to hit because that football stadium is almost so great up. to see you guys again. So uh, it's been way too long since we last saw each other uh, in person, let alone virtually. Yeah. Um, and I do just want to say it's such an honor to hear that that you guys in the Rich Dad organization uh, watch any of these wealthy on videos. Um, and, and I just want to give the compliment right back to you guys, which is you guys were a massive inspiration for me in starting that platform. So um, in many ways, it's just seeds you planted, yeah, well, you, you know, take the, ultra the harvest complex returning and back to simplify you guys, it right? or clarify, should okay. I say. Not simple, well, but clarify it. Well, thank you. And, and really, the whole reason why I started Wealthion was to try to give the, the average person, the little guy, access to what the experts are thinking and the decision makers on Wall Street are, are, are thinking. Uh, and of course, those guys tend to speak in their own particular Language. type of jargon. And so really, yeah. I just sort of see my role as, as really just trying to be sort of like the decoder ring that takes sure. <laughs> complex <laughs> words we're saying, you know, putting the eye drops uh, uh, in the stadium reference. Um, it's really, this is really about the power of exponential growth. And a lot of the trends that are sort of driving the world we live in at large are, are exponential. And the human mind doesn't do a really good job of understanding exponentials. And that's why uh, my, my former partner, Chris Martinson, uh, came up with this analogy about the magic eyedropper in the stadium. And so basically he says, look, pick the stadium of your choice. Um, we usually use a, Yankee a Stadium because we, we both walks were down from to the pitcher's England mound and, and squeezes out a single super. drop of water right there on the pitcher's mound. And that drop of water doubles in volume every minute. So minute one, it's, it's one drop in size. Minute two, it's two drops in size. Minute three, it's four drops in size. Minute four, it's eight drops in size, right? So the question is, is if you got handcuffed to the, the topmost bleacher seat in the stadium, how long would you have to escape your handcuffs before the stadium was underwater? And, you know, most people will say, I don't know, a year, you know, months. Uh, the answer is very surprising. Uh, the answer is 45 minutes, much less time than you think. And that's just because when it doubles, each doubling is, is bigger than all the increases that came before it. But the really important question is, is at, at what point uh, is the, the, uh, the park only 3% filled? So like the infield is just covered in like a foot of water and you can now begin to see, oh, this thing is starting to fill up. Um, what time does that happen? And that happens at uh, minute like 40. So basically by the time you see there's a problem, the stadium's filled just a couple of minutes later, right? By the time you see the issue, it's way too late to avoid it. Your only choices at this point in time are just to sort of manage the impact. And so um, I think that's very much what you guys are, are picking up here, where it feels like we're that far along in a lot of these exponential trends that 
if you're sitting there hoping, oh, well, maybe somebody's going to come up with a solution and we can avoid this problem that I'm seeing, in a lot of cases, that's that's not going to happen. And you're really just wasting precious time with false hope. Um, what you should be doing is saying, okay, it looks like this is going to happen. I need to figure out how I'm going to reduce my vulnerability to its system. full force. Are you talking survival. about the U.S. dollar as right a reserve currency? Or are you talking about... Uh, just our ability to afford our basic way of living. You know, I mean, that right now, I think, is getting pretty late in the game, especially if you live in you know parts of the world that are really suffering right now under just crushing inflation. I mean, I don't think anybody in Europe, for example, <clears throat> could have ever forecasted a year ago that they would be paying what they're paying right now for energy. Yeah. Yeah. So when you look at a lot of times in America can't see because we're a goldfish bowl. You know, everybody looks in, but we don't see out. Mm hmm. I'm looking at what happened in Sri Lanka, what's happening in Brazil, what's happening in uh, England, what's going to happen in Germany uh, with the, uh, but we, we can't see it as Americans. And yeah, I think they, the goldfish bowl is a great analogy too, because goldfish really have like incredibly short-term memories. We just, yes, <laughs> so do we. Go. So do we. So I'm, I'm sitting here watching all this. And so that's why the, I keep thinking of the eye drop theory, you know, I said, when Pictures Mountain is covered and I'm sitting on the top bleacher, how much time have I got? Yeah, so uh, again, it really depends. And I'm glad you mentioned Brent Johnson's dollar milkshake theory because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that into play here in just a second. Um, real quick, though, um, you're right to be looking outside because collapse happens from the outside in, right? right? It's the weaker players that fall first. And then those are dominoes that topple over bigger dominoes. And, and then it all begins to progress toward the center. And, and yes, we live here in our fishbowl, our goldfish bowl here in the U.S. We do have a lot of advantages that a lot of other countries don't have. And so we're likely not going to be the first one to fall. We're probably likely going to be the last one. Um, but to find out where we are in the story, we want to look out at the periphery and see how it's doing. And as you just said, Robert, the very extreme ends of the periphery are not doing well at all, right? You've got a place like Sri Lanka that's basically, you know, gone into full gone. collapse, right? Yeah. You know, I don't know if you saw the videos of the people it's a few months ago storming the presidential palace. You, 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 you got to remember, um, uh, like, we saw a preview of this happen during the Arab Spring, right? Um, it was sort of put off in the media as, oh, look, this is democracy in action. These are people that are rising up against, you know, dictators and whatnot. That really wasn't the primary motivation for the Arab Spring. It was that they experienced um, sudden and extreme inflation in those countries. And all of a sudden, people couldn't feed their families yes. or, or keep them exactly. warm. And exactly. when you get to that point, you really don't have any other option but to throw out who is, whoever's in power, because whatever they're doing just isn't working for you, right? You're beginning to drown. Uh, and so that's what happened in Sri Lanka. And, uh, you know, that's beginning to happen with greater frequency uh, elsewhere in the world. And, and Europe isn't <clears throat> in that case yet, but it's certainly a lot closer to that destination, Correct. sadly, than it was a year ago. And that's, I, uh, I don't know if you had the chance to call him as Andy Shackman. He's Miles Franklin. He's one of the most accurate gold guy I've ever, I mean, his macro of the world is precise. But he was talking about on uh, in September, no, in 2019, when Biden has Af abandoned Afghanistan, the next day, Saudi Arabia went, went to talk to China and Russia. And he was, this is 2019, and just a couple of days ago, Saudi Arabia switched from the petrodollar to go, shifting to a gold back yuan. And nobody even notices that. So Saudi Arabia joined forces with Russia, China, Brazil, India, uh, South Africa. Is, so uh, uh, I don't have a when, chance to talk to uh, Andy. Russia his, invaded his Ukraine. So, um, so. Basically, the U.S. weaponized uh, the financial system against Russia. Right. Um, yes. And a lot of other countries looked at that, you know, like basically like seizing Russia's assets that were held abroad and whatnot. And a lot of countries looked at that and said, whoa, like I'm in the U.S.'s good graces right now, but I might not always be. Exactly. And if they could do that to me. So, you know, what we've done in the response to uh, the war in Ukraine, um, whatever you think about it, um, uh, we have basically provided a pretty strong incentive 
for many countries to accelerate their plans to de-dollarize. And that's exactly what you're just talking about with the, the steps that, that Saudi Arabia took there. Uh, and I have not talked to, to Andy yet, though I appreciate you you putting us in contact, Robert. Um, so I can't talk really authoritatively about that that last statement about them switching to you know some sort of potentially gold-backed yuan thing. But um, I certainly have heard a lot of commentary recently about the BRICS countries um, working on a commodity-backed currency yes. to to rival the dollar and probably going to be priced right. in gold grams and whatnot. Um, you know, we can we can debate. Wait, 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 wait. There's two yes. more things that happened. You had the Nord Stream pipeline was bombed. Yep. I mean, was that an accident? Or did it just happen to blow up? And the, the other thing that happened, the reason you're on today is because when uh, – <laughs> Who's the new prime or the future ex prime minister of England? Tried to raise, tried to. What is she trying to do? Who's trust? Yeah, who's already out? Yeah, yeah, she's gone. The shortest term prime minister in history, but because she raised interest rates, whatever she did, or no, she tried to cut and all this stuff. The whole bond market nearly came apart. Their pensions came apart, and then they had to bring a new prime minister in already. So all of this is happening. And Americans are wondering, well, who's going to win the midterm? <laughs> you know? well, well, so, that is important. Yeah, Midterms well, are well, important. But, uh, great point, which is um, kind of back to our stadium. Like, where are we on the big picture of where things are headed? Um, we are beginning to see, you know, as, as, as things, uh, as you go along an exponential curve, things happen faster and faster, right? And so we're beginning to see more of these really big things that we just really couldn't have ever expected would happen, right? Um, oh, the Saudis are, are maybe, you know, beginning to, to reject the petrodollar. Oh, uh, you know, uh, England's bond market almost blew up. And to your point, Robert, you know, somebody just sabotaged the Nord Stream pipeline. I, I don't think it's, it's I, I don't think anybody debates that this was an act of sabotage. Now you can talk, you know, a lot of people are saying, pointing fingers in different directions. Um, but, uh, uh, you you know, we're, we're seeing more of these things that nobody could have seen coming, more of these sort of black swans. And, and of course, the more they are and the faster they happen, the more the odds of something really systemic breaking and something really bad happening obviously increases. But, but a big part here is they want to destroy the hege hegemony of the U.S. dollar, which came in place in 1944 with Bretton Woods. The dollar became the gold standard of the world, or yep. the reserve currency of the world. And then 71, Nixon took us off the gold standard, and we went from being a capitalist state to a credit state. So everything is floating on debt right now. Correct. And I think bonds are debt also. And so when Harry Dent is yelling about, you should buy U.S. Treasuries, I said, but I think they're going to torpedo the U.S. Treasury. And that's why we called you, Adam, is because what the hell is a bond? Is you, a bond? Know, you know what I mean? How safe is it? <laughs> Uh, be, be, what? How safe? That was 2019. The repo market blew up again. The last time that blew up was 2008. And what? The reason the repo market is important is like repossession. Do you know how valuable is the asset that you think is an asset? Are they going to come and repo your dollar, or will they rather re repo your refrigerator? Do you, do you know what I mean? What has more value today? All and right. so well, in 2019, well, are... that's what blew up also again. How right. so valuable what, is a bond? So, so let's let's start with explaining what bonds are, and then let then we'll get into yeah. um, okay. are they a good place to be now or not? Because the the answers, um, you know, it's a it's a little bit nuanced, and, and it's a sense of like um, something that might have a long that that might not be something good to be in in the long term, might be something good to be in.